Hey everybody, Tornado Soup here. So, Heat Vision, Super Strength, Freeze Breath, Flight, Super Hearing. Superman's list of powers is seemingly endless. There's hardly anything he can't do. And for good reason, too. Created by two scrawny kids from Depression Era Cleveland, Superman was the representation of everything his creators wanted him to be. He was pure of heart, brave, and possibly most importantly, had the power to deal with wrongdoers. To deal with bullies. This especially resonated with writer Jerry Siegel, whose father had died during a robbery at his clothing store. In this cruel world that Siegel and his artist friend Joe Schuster grew up in, it makes sense that they would craft a hero like Superman. He was everything they wanted to be, but couldn't. He was their stand-in, their idol, just like the last son of Krypton would be for generations of children to come. The problem with this, however, is Superman often appears as overpowered to many now. This can lead to stale stories and contrived ideas. Many now see Superman's strength as his greatest weakness. Over the years, writers have tried to remedy to this in many different ways. During production of the Superman radio show, Kryptonite was created so that the star could go on vacation every now and again. The glowing green rock has, however, since become an integral part to the Superman lore, serving as a ready-made way to give Kal-El believability and life-threatening situations. In the same vein, other weaknesses would reveal themselves in the preceding decade, in the forms of red sunlight radiation and magic. Other times, Superman has been powered down, notably in Bruce Timm and Company's Superman the Animated Series, which has become a defining depiction of the Man of Steel for many. Supes is shown to struggle with feats of strength that would be no problem for him in the comics. However, he still manages to flex his muscles, such as in the Justice League Unlimited series finale, where he beats Darkseid across Metropolis, noting how he usually feels like he lives in a world made out of cardboard, but here he can just let loose. Now, this is where I think Superman's strength becomes fascinating, because as much as I love those animated shows, I do think there's an argument to be made that Superman is, in fact, just as interesting fully powered as he is underpowered. All-Star Superman, which I have right here, is the prime example of that. Written by Grant Morrison, with art by Frank Whiteley, All-Star shows Superman approach his most powerful. After an overload of solar radiation, pictured here, following a trip to the sun. By the end of the story, there's hardly a villain that can actually pose a physical threat to him. He literally beats a living sun towards the end. But does that mean this is a boring Superman story? Uh, the short answer to that would be no. In fact, All-Star Superman is considered to be one of the greatest Superman stories of all time. It works as a deconstruction of what being the most powerful being in the universe really means. It deals with both Clark's isolation from humanity, as well as all the things he can do with his powers and what they really mean. With his advanced power set, Superman begins to take on various tasks, from his prophesized 12 super challenges, to rebuilding the Titanic in his Fortress of Solitude. Let's just see if I can find that somewhere. No. Hold on. I should have I should have bookmarked these pages. Well, that's a space shuttle. That's different. Yeah, here we go. I just rebuilt the Titanic. Towards the end, as Superman begins to succumb to the cellular cellular destruction that was set up by his trip to the sun, Lex Luthor gains Kryptonian powers himself. But instead of forcing the planet to bow before him, well, he does a little of that, but he stops after a little while, so that's, that's fine. Anyway, he experiences the world in the same way that Superman does. He sees it all, atom by atom, and starts to understand the universe as a whole. Now, think about that. Superman can see the world broken down by its very atoms. He understands the inner workings of everything. Now, is that not interesting? At least in theory, and under the right writer, this is the potential setup for a complex character, with complex stories. And All-Star Superman isn't the only story to touch on this potential. 
So remember how I mentioned before that Justice League Unlimited ends with Supes letting loose against Darkseid? And how he mentions feeling like he lives in a world made out of cardboard? Well, just think about that for a minute. Think about how isolating that would be. Being afraid to break something, to break someone, because you're just so much stronger than them. This is illustrated in the Justice League episode, Only a Dream, where Superman lives through his worst dream, his worst nightmare, where he's slowly overcome by his own strength, killing Lois Lane with his heat vision, and squishing Jimmy Olsen to death in his embrace. Now, just think about that. This man has lived his entire life afraid of himself, afraid that he could kill his loved ones by hugging them. Yet he still puts on the cape. He still goes and defends the world, defends the universe, defends every living creature in existence. He represents hope and love, even though he can hardly get either of those things himself, because he is just so isolated. Think about that. That struggle is interesting. That character is interesting. At least as interesting as Batman or Spider-Man or any other beloved superhero. And other Superman stories, like Superman Birthright and Secret Origins, also deal with this isolation that Clark experiences for his entire life. Both while growing up in Smallville and later at the Daily Planet. In fact, this isolation leads to the duality of Superman and Clark Kent, one representing his power and isolation, and the other being the weaker, yet less lonely version of himself. This is all to say that, no, Superman's strength is not a narrative weakness, at least when handled by the correct writers. Films such as The Man of Steel have lightly touched on this, but none have taken it head-on, outside of the various DCAU projects as mentioned before. So there's potential there, potential far beyond villains and fight scenes, because in the end, his, how interesting he is shouldn't be dependent on how interesting his fights are. I mean, sure, you can just throw a bunch of doomsdays at him. You can throw dark side at him every once in a while or Mongol and yeah, it, it could be a fun fight scene. It could be fun to watch. It could have amazing visuals, but Maybe the story isn't as good. This version of Superman right here, I mean, there's hardly a big fight scene in this. I mean, th there's some, but it's not the crux of the book. It's not the crux of the character. Despite all of his strength, being strong is not his defining characteristic. And when the, his other characteristics are focused on, he's not a boring character. That's when his strength is not his narrative weakness. So, there's potential there. Potential far beyond villains and fight scenes. So when you're thinking about Superman, try to not lump him into the pile of boring characters. There's so much more to him. So much more that can be done with him. Such rich storylines to be mined. But ultimately... His strength isn't a narrative weakness. Just a mostly untapped gold mine of potential storylines that could make a fantastic Superman movie or a fantastic comic book. So that's all I have right now. Um, just wanted to point out that, just like with my Watchmen video, I got this comic from the local library. Not a sponsor or anything. I'm not, you know, I'm not big enough for sponsors yet, but... Still, go to your local library, check this things out. There's there's tons of stuff, tons of tons of graphic novels you can get, tons of other books, you know, if you like real literature, then go ahead and go and Yeah. Local libraries play an integral part of communities and neighborhoods and they're just so important and they need support. They need support from people like you. People like me. So, anyway, that's my that's my spiel. Um, hopefully, I'll see you next time. And...
Goodbye, everybody.